So guys, today we're going to talk about cell division in a cell cycle. And contrary to, well, actually, before I even start this, put in the chat. Put in the chat. Tell me some things that you remember about the cell cycle or cell division, words that come to mind. I know you learned this in the seventh grade, right? Most of you did this in mitosis, middle school. Yeah. Interphase. All right. Mitosis, Good. interphase. Okay. Two of them. Meiosis. Okay. Meiosis, I like Alex, is a little different than mitosis. And we'll get into those differences. Cytokinesis, daughter cells, anaphase. Woo. Oh, oh my children, you're making me so happy. Oh, I feel beclumped. I'm so happy over here. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, those are all terms we'll talk about. Um, and contrary to popular belief, there is more to cell cycle and cell division than just mitosis, than my uh, PMAT, which you are like, yep, there's G1, Alina, G2S, and M phase. And we're going to talk about all of that today. So what is a cell cycle? It describes a pie chart from the phases of a cell's life, tells how much time cells spend performing certain activities. And depending on the chart, you have to, you're gonna, we're gonna do a really good practice today of reading pie charts. But notice there's different stages. There's the G1, which is gross, growth, not gross. The S phase, which we're gonna talk about is the DNA synthesis, where DNA is duplicated. There's the G2, growth and preparation for mitosis. And then there's the M, or the mitosis phase. And that's where mitosis occurs. And we'll talk about what else occurs and all of that. But good job, good job, good job. So according to the diagram, cells spend most of its life, most of its time doing which of the following activities? Based on this diagram. Yes, this one spends most of its time in the growth stage. If you look at it, it's in growth stages, a majority of this pie chart. Now, some others may change a little, and you're going to have to answer based on the chart and not based on what you know. Yay. So according to this diagram, a cell spends – oh, thank you, sir. You're the man. I just got some dropped off some fire for my push card. Thank you. Oh. According to this diagram, the cell spends the least amount of time doing which of the following? Which of the following is the least amount? I got 80 responses. Mitosis, yeah, or cell division, yes, yeah, sorry. That's it. Cell got it. Yeah. Good, good. Notice a little pie chart, a little smidgen compared to all of this. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Small part. Mm. So more about cell cycle. There are two main parts. There's the M phase, notice right here, M phase. And M phase includes mitosis and cytokinesis. But take atten pay attention here. Mitosis and cytokinesis are not the same. They're different. And that's something you need to be aware of. And then the rest of this, looking at this, what do you call all the rest of this? There's a term. What do you call all of this? that my, my thing's going into, looking at this pie chart, what do you call all of this? You call it interphase. Sorry, I realize you're on another page and you have to switch back and forth. So this whole thing is interphase. Interphase includes G1, S, and G2. So according to this diagram, what is the longest phase of the entire cell cycle? Come on, 17 of you are responding. There's 17 alive human beings. So one person is not in here. That's that's pretty good. Okay, thank you guys. So one of you is not here. So responses. Uh, oh, let's take a look here. Let's take a look. Some said S phase. Mm, look at all your options. Yeah, look at what the choices are. Mm -hmm. These people right up here with interphase. Interphase is the correct answer because it incorporates all G1, S, and G2 phase. So notice inside here, it incorporates everything 
not just the S phase. Well, S phase is the longest if you're asking about each and each of these, but when interphase was given as an option, interphase incorporates all of these. So you gotta pay attention to what the question's asking. Very sneaky. All right, according to this diagram, what is the longest phase of the M phase? Ooh. Ooh, let's see if we know how to read this. Let's see, let's see. Ooh. Oh, seeing that snowfall out there is nice. It's very therapeutic. Yeah, it's, it's very peaceful, isn't it? It is. They I'm said sure. it was going to snow all these days, but it hasn't really accumulated much. All right, so you guys said prophase, and you are wrong in that <laughs> M phase incorporates cytokinesis as well. Oh, hello, Aro. Um, just follow along, log in, join pd.com, and the code's right there in the corner. Um, cytokinesis is the longest stage of M phase. Because notice right here, can you see my, Ms. Murdoch, is my pointer appearing on the presentation thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. You, so yeah. cytokinesis starts right here and goes all the way through here. So while cytokinesis yeah. is not part of mitosis, it starts during the mitosis stages of anaphase. So about halfway but the through question anaphase, is the question is asking about the M phase, right? So if you look at the diagram, look where the M phase is. It includes both mitosis and cytokinesis. So the longest part of the M phase, according to the choices you were given, is cytokinesis, right? The longest part of just mitosis would be prophase. Right, just mitosis is made of those four phases, but M phase includes cytokinesis with it. So in that case, you got to really read these questions. Really read these questions. Look at diagrams carefully, and that's what we're trying to help you do, so you can ace the SOL later. All right. So what is the cell cycle? The cell cycle is a cycle of cell growth and division, cell reproduction, asexual reproduction. What does it mean to be asexual reproduction? Somebody put that in the chat for me. What do you think asexual reproduction means? Does it involve, and then I'm going to ask you a couple questions about it, just the extension of it a little. So let me put it in the chat. What do you think asexual reproduction means? One, okay. Not two, okay, good. So one organism meaning, involved. Meaning one parent, one parent. One parent. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, yeah, now, good. in asexual, is it going to be genetically the same or genetically different? Not different. Asexual is the, yes, the same. Good. So if one, parent, if one parent makes babies, all the babies will be identical to the parent. If two parents make babies, Th that's sexual reproduction, and their babies are all going to be different from them because they're shuffling up all their genes before they make all those babies. Yeah. So asexual reproduction is one parent, identical babies. And with mitosis, um, for some organisms, that is actually reproducing. A single-celled organism that goes through mitosis to reproduce is making identical cells of itself. Like, for example, an amoeba. An amoeba reproduces by mitosis, which is, for the amoeba is a form of asexual reproduction, right, where one parent makes identical babies. So that would be an example of asexual reproduction for an amoeba or a paramecium or something like that. Now, when you're a multicellular organism like us, we have a trillion cells in our bodies. When one of our cells does mitosis, we're not reproducing. We're just growing or repairing or replacing cells that have died in our bodies, right? So it just depends on what kind of organism you're talking about. For an amoeba, mitosis is reproducing. For a human, mitosis is just replacing and repairing. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Dobson just walked by and goes, you're in stereo. He hears it from one side and the other. Oh, cool. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So 
Dragon dots indicate the way many multicellular organisms grow. Do the cells get larger or do they produce more? Let's see, we got nine of you. Let's see what we see. Produce more. Yes. Animal cells are tend to be very similar in size. Um, whether you have a kitten or an elephant their cells are relatively the same size now the amount of cells they have will vary very much the amount of cells in a kitten compared to an elephant huge huge so it's not that they have bigger cells it's they have more cells you guys are so smart thank you <laughs> all right m phase, m phase has two parts we talked about it, mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis incorporates all that stuff you guys talked about, anaphase, prophase, metaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis, which is the division of the cell cytoplasm. So I think of it as when a cell starts pinching in, it forms something called a cleavage furrow, and that's when the cells pinch in and separate. That pinching is a cytokinesis process happening. Cytokinesis is a process, and it's the process of the cells pinching and separating to form two identical daughter cells. All right, drag a part, drag a dot to the part of M phase where the cytoplasm divides. Ooh. 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 Oh, 14 of you responded. Ooh. The vision of cytoplasm is cytokinesis. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brilliant. Now drag it out to the end phase where the nucleus divides. We don't we don't die, we multiply. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Add spooky effects. Where's the division of the nucleus? Yes, the nucleus divides during mitosis, specifically during. I usually say telophase or or anaphase around there, but that's where it occurs, the division of the nucleus. This is cytoplasm, this is nucleus. Excellent. You guys are so smart. You're smart. When a cell divides by mitosis, the two daughter cells are created genetically identical to the parent cell. So what you start with, and this is where science is so sexist, why has it got to be daughter cells? Why can't it be son cells? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> we, have prophase, we have first you have a parent cell and then it, then when this goes through this whole process and it has two new daughter cells is the result they're the same number of chromosomes and the same genes in the chromosomes they're identical and this is important because a your body can't get dna from somewhere else it's inside of you and b those cells need to know what to do and your body has specific functions based on its dna so if your cells need to replace them they need to be able to know what they're doing. So they need to have to die. They have to have the blueprint, your DNA. It has to be identical to the other cells. Just call them cells. I know, Luke. Why can't we just call them child cells? Oh, yeah. No, child cells. Ooh, child cells. Yes, we have a parent cell. Now we have child cells. Four cells. <laughs> okay. So, ooh, child. Ooh, ooh. Let's go back. Ooh, child cells. Ooh, oh, 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 okay, you two, stop fighting. They like the child cell idea. Yeah. <laughs> when a cell divides by mitosis, drag a red dot to the parent cell and drag dot to the two daughter cells. Sorry, I'm going to have to call it daughter cells because that's what science said. You, you guys can become scientists and take it over and then name it child cells. Green, red to parent. Green to daughter cells. Yes! Parent is up here. Daughter cells is down here. Oh, I knew you guys were smart. 
I said it the whole time. You're smart. My cat was like, meow, meow. No, they're not. And I was like, kitty cat. Yes, they are. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll just go on. <laughs> so where is, put it in the chat real quick. Where is DNA located in eukaryotic cells? Somebody tell me. Somebody put it in the chat. Where do we find DNA in eukaryotic cells? Nucleus! Elizabeth Hull, thank you. Thank you, R.O. There is civilization out there. Yes. You get a virtual hug. <laughs> so, and notice this DNA. You might usually see the chromosome, the DNA out here, like down here. That's usually how you remember it. Well, it tightly coils around these histones, and then it tightly supercoils to form these chromosomes. So here's and we're going to talk through these stages really quick. First stage, this is what you guys probably have all seen in middle school. Now, full disclosure, DNA really isn't this colorful. It's very translucent and clear. They do color it, code it for showing different parts, which is the whole point of it. So this is what you may see. With the DNA, the chromatin, the DNA wrapped around these histones, these little protein balls, the DNA wraps around it and starts condensing. Then it starts con condensing a little more and you have it start to becoming organized and then last stage you have what we form chromosomes and these chromosomes are joined together by a centromere which I'll talk about in a second I get ahead of myself a little but the chromosomes are what the ending and these chromosomes are there because think of like a box of wires and I like this analogy you got a whole box of all these wires Right, and, you're, and you want to try to divide it up and make it all work every which way. You can't just pull one out. It's all like conjumbled. But if you wrap them up and keep them organized, it makes it easier to pull them apart and separate them and organize them. So that's sort of like DNA. If it's wrapped up tightly in these comb, around these histones and then coiled up super easily, it's easier to separate and divide. I think I like that analogy, Miss Murdoch. It's like a. <laughs> It helps with well, organization. I mean, if you're going from left to right in this picture, right, the first picture on the left, number one, that is just the DNA molecule. That's the, the twisted ladder that you learned about in seventh grade, right? Um, DNA, though, uh, needs to be tightly coiled up in order to fit into a cell because there's a ton of it. So to organize it and, and make it fit into the cell's new you wrap it around these little green balls called histone proteins, and that's what Mr. Bouchard is pointing out in picture number two, right? And for the most part, during interphase, during interphase when a cell is doing its jobs and it's making proteins and it's doing the work it needs to do, it needs the DNA to be uncoiled, to be available. So all those genes that are part of the DNA are available to be used to help the cell do its work during interphase. So like number two and three, that's that's how nicely uncoiled the DNA is during interphase. But as the cell gets ready to divide, to go through mitosis, it starts to pack things up really, really, really tightly to coil the DNA up in four and five. So that it's kind of like you, if you're going on a, on a trip, right? You go into your bedroom and you take your clothes that are everywhere and you put them into a suitcase, right? Because you're not going to walk through the airport with all your clothes draped or, or, on, or on your shoulders. You'll lose stuff. Stuff will fall off in the airport. You'll lose it. Same thing with mitosis. If you don't tightly coil those chromosomes up, then during mitosis, you might have DNA break off or go the wrong direction or get lost, right? So number five is what the DNA looks like during mitosis, during cell division. And it needs to be tightly coiled up like that because it's like the cell is packing its suitcase so that you can take the DNA safely into two new child cells. Okay? There we go. <laughs> child cells. Happy now? <laughs> All right. Okay. So you got her angry, guys. Great. Now she's angry. angry. She's I'm not angry. angry at all. I'm letting you know that I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, drag a red dot to the DNA condition during mitosis and drag a blue during interphase. Red mitosis, blue interphase. Let's see our responses. I just always got to make sure I read right here. 
before I switch over so I don't forget. Red mitosis, got it. Red is over here. Blue should be right around in here. Ah, red over here. Blue over in this area. Red, blue. Hey, you blue, right there. Get over here. You blue, over here. No, hey, back over here, blue. Reds, over here. I mean, it's like herding cats. So what happens is DNA, it starts out unwound like this. It tightly coils up and forms this chromosome. <coughs> now, drag a red dot to the organelle and drag a blue dot to the nucleic acid. Think about it. A histone is not a nucleic acid. Careful. Ah, oh, red dot should be over here. Chromosomes are an organelle. Nucleic acids right here. Blue, not there, not histones, guys. Blue should be right here along these rungs of the ladder. DNA is one red. of the nucleic acids we learned about in the biochemistry unit. And this over here should be your organelle. Blue, red. Hey, you blue, get over there. Hey, you red, get over there. Get, get. Chromosomes, contrary, are, a, are considered an organelle. So you need to be aware of that. They are cellular structures that you can see with a microscope. DNA is a molecule and it is a nucleic acid type. Of molecule. Okay. Chromosomes is DNA that is condensed or coiled in. So this DNA, like you guys might have seen those X's um, for these sister chromatids. And you guys are like, oh, it's like an X. It looks like an X. However, or but, and I got a big one, this right here is one chromosome on this side. And this right here is a sister chromatid on the other side. And in the middle, they have what's joined. I always like to think of it as like a piece of Velcro or something. So they don't crisscross. They sort of come in the middle, pinch in the middle, then it moves back out. Here's another one, and it sort of moves back out. So they don't ever crisscross. They more go like this in the middle. All right, and there's sister chromatid. Like this one right here is one chromatid. This right here is the other chromatid. Sisters from the same mister. Because <laughs> it's from this genetically same. <laughs> so it's a duplicate in sister chromatids. The centromere, that's the name of the piece of Velcro, as I like to call it. The centromere is sort of like the little binding. It's like a little... It's like a little uh, piece of tape or something. I don't know. That's my analogy I make. A little now. That's about as much as you need to know. And it's what keeps the guys together. It's not very strong, but strong enough to do what it needs to do for this process. All right. Take a break. I'm going to play a little song. Get up. Stretch.
boogie. Then we are stretching. Just <laughs> oh wow. We that we gossip awesome. and we talk about you guys. <laughs> totally. That's what we do. Well, we stand up and stretch and we go in the hallway and discuss. Except our, our, our gossip is always very positive. We all, we say all kinds of sweet things about all of you. Except. You wouldn't believe what what uh, what he said about you, Luke. He said such nice things. He really did. <laughs> you know, I called you a pesky hobbit. <laughs> All right, come on, pesky hobbit. We're back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got we got some more interactives for you here. So come have fun with this. The and DNA in cells is most often described by two names. Move a red dot to the term that describes the DNA of a cell interface. Move a green dot to the DNA that describes DNA during mitosis. Red interface. Green mitosis. I got to memorize one of them so I know which way to go. Okay. Is that we hobbits answering? Green mitosis. Red. It's called the chromatin. Mm -hmm. Chromatin is during right. interphase. The red dot should go to the chromatin. During interphase, chromatin is uncoiled DNA, so the genes are available to help the cell do its work during interphase. Chromosomes are only visible and are only tightly coiled up during mitosis. So green goes to chromosomes. <laughs> Here's the whole cell cycle. Notice we call it a cell cycle because it goes over and over again in cyclical fashion. What? <laughs> That's right, ladies and germs. We start up here, the centrioles start appearing, and this is an interphase. Then we get the prophase. Prophase, what you notice is you got the centrioles, and you'll see these little lines that appear, and that's spindle fibers. The, the nuclear membrane will start to dissipate, and you'll start being able to see the chromosomes during prophase. Metaphase, they line up in the middle, and you have two centrioles on the outside. The two centrioles like here as captains, and all the chromosomes are lined up in the middle to be picked for kickball teams. I'll take the tall chromosome. I'll take the short cup chromosome. I don't want the slow chromosome. <laughs> and then, then they're picked during anaphase. They're pulled apart, the spindle fiber. Then the two new nucleuses start appearing during telophase. Cytokinesis is happening, and then two new cells. And now these two new daughter cells or child cells, they're here. They'll each now go through this whole process. And this goes over and over and over again in the body. Overview, we just talked about this. Interphase. Most of the cell's life is spent in this phase. Interphase includes the G1 stage. Cell grows, develops, performs life functions. Organelles may duplicate. We got the S stage, DNA replicates and begins to coil, central duplicate. G2 phase, growth continues to perform life function, cell prepare for mitosis, and makes organelles. What happens during the S phase of interphase? Go ahead, ladies and germs. Put it in there. We hobbits included. What were the tree folk? The ants? Was that what the ants were? The trees? You mean the giant trees that walked and talked? Yes, yeah. they're called E N T ants. Yes, there we go. Sarah knows. <laughs> Come on, hobbits and ants. Let's answer this question. The only one in the movie, was, his name was Treebeard. <laughs> DNA replicates. Very good. The DNA replicates. That's what I want you to get out of S phase. <laughs> DNA replication. Like oh gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, very good. Oh, DNA oh, replication. Oh, you know what? I want to stop. I want to edit that. Um, I, I don't think that's correct. I don't think DNA starts to coil until prophase. I think that's a that's a mistake in this 
Upper Deck that I'm going to fix. I apologize for that. That's our fault. It doesn't start to coil until prophase begins. I don't know why that's in there. That should be changed. Everyone's you can have the central duplication too, because that does appear up there in the picture. Yeah, I mean, other organelles are going to be uh, um, reproducing. But the big thing sort is of all through the phase. Yeah, but the DNA replication, that's very specific to the S phase. So good for you if you got that. DNA replication. DNA replication. That's why I have no idea. That's why we're doing this, guys. The so we can you know. most important thing that happens in S phase is DNA replicates or DNA mix copies. Yep. <laughs> and now mitosis, prophase, DNA continues to coil and condense in a chromosome and couples of sister chromatids. Nuclear membrane disintegrates and centrioles migrate to poles. So again, in this picture, these centrioles, poles. When we say poles, they mean opposite ends of the cell. And these little fibers are the spindle fibers. So this is usually a picture. And notice this one. The DNA is coiled up, and you start to be able to see it because it's forming chromosomes. It's now becoming visible. Your dog looked like a Gandalf, Miss Murdoch. He did. He looked like Gandalf a little bit. He did, yeah. <laughs> And mitosis, M phase, metaphase, and mitosis, metaphase, chromosomes now line up in the middle, and each chromosome is an attached uh, spindle fiber at centromere. So this is a, a drawn picture. This is usually what you could see if you look in a microscope. And what it, to me, it looks like a squished spider, like a squished bug with its legs all spread out. And that's usually what represents all the um chromosome lining up right there you can't usually see the spindle fibers in those micrographs um you can see the chromosomes because the chromosomes take the dye the stain that the scientist puts on the cell and they stain purple or nice nice red colors the spindle fibers are just more delicate those spindle fibers that are getting ready to tug them apart don't take the stain as well but they are there they're just hard to see. And now in anaphase, sister chromatids separate. This is when the centrioles have their teams and they're pulled apart to both ends. And the spindle fibers begin to disintegrate. Here is where you'll see that separation now. You, it was all jumbled together before. But if you notice, looking in this picture, you see a space between these sets. That's because they're being pulled to opposite poles. And here in a plant cell, this is usually you'll see them pull to opposite ends. You'll see a space start forming between the middle of them. That's when you know you're in anaphase. Telophase, the chromosomes gather at opposite ends. Notice they're in opposite ends. And they uncoil. Two new nuclear, mem nuclear membranes start appearing around both of these. In here, you'll notice this is cytokinesis. We're starting to squish in the middle here. In a plant cell, what forms is what's called a cell plate. Since they don't pinch in cells because they got a cell wall, they got to start building a new cell membrane and new cell wall to separate them. And that's how plants do it. They form what we call, it's like they're putting up drywall to make that new wall. And that's called a cell plate. Forward. Now here's cytokinesis. Notice cytokinesis in animal cells, it's starting to pinch in half. Oh, you did say here. Plant cells begin to build their wall. And two new daughter cells slash child cells are formed having identical set of duplicated chromosomes. Returns to interphase and a cell cycle begins again. Sorry, I don't know why my phone is going off. Probably somebody calling and asked me if I wanted to redo my car warranty again for a thousandth time. All right, so what stage of mitosis is this? Let's see what we got. Remember, they're being pulled apart. Three people are responding. There's five lemmings in the group. Six lemmings. Come, my lemmings. <laughs> 
Anaphase. Anaphase. Good. This is anaphase, right? Good. Nice. <laughs> ah. Oh, what stage is this then there, we hobbits? So <laughs> this stage right here is metaphase. Excellent. Good. Metaphase. Very good. Excellent job. I knew you were smarter than hobbits. <laughs> Oh boy, they're getting into their elf and talk. <laughs> You're an elf. Or you could be a dwarf, one of the dwarves. I love the dwarfs. Don't tell the elf. That's my favorite. He throws them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what phase is this? Be careful, this is when the chromosomes are becoming available. <laughs> Prophase. Yes. Why? Because you can see this is all tightly coiled up and starting to become visible. When you see it like this, it's starting to become organized. That is prophase. And you can also tell that the membrane is starting to disappear. Which phase of the cell cycle is this? Ooh. 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 Oh, miniature dwarf. Are you like two foot three, Mighty? Oh. This is prophase. No, interphase. Sorry. Interphase. Wait, go back. Which one is it? That's interphase. Yeah. yeah. That's interphase. And and you can tell it's interphase because the contents of the nucleus are all just sort of, you can't really see any chromosomes in there. It's all just sort of uh, opaque, right? Just very grainy. So nothing started coiling up yet. You can also see a little round nucleolus in there, that sort of pink circle that's within the, the larger circle. Yeah. <laughs> Which phase of the cell cycle is this cell in? Hmm. You could put Luke, you could put Maddie on Luke's shoulders and form an ultra <laughs> six foot. That'd be like ten battle. feet. <laughs> yeah, you could be an ent then. All right, what phase? Telophase. Good, good. Yes. That's good. It's telophase. Yeah. You, guys doing pretty well. you can tell because the, you got two new nuclei forming and the chromosomes haven't quite finished uncoiling yet. There are actually two phases happening here at the same time. What are they? Ooh. 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 <laughs> Six of you are responding to my spooky words. Ooh. Seven, eight. <laughs> Respond to me. Respond to me. Respond to me. Telephase and cytokinesis. That's what's up. Whoop, whoop. Yes, a ghost, Alina. Spooky Bouchard. Woo. I don't say boo. I want to go back to Halloween. Can we go back to Halloween? Call me boo shard. <laughs> It is, Before isn't it? Each it's cell nice can divide, it needs extra copies of all its chromosomes to send each new daughter Ooh. cell. When do chromosomes Ooh. get replicated? Ooh. A pirate ghost. Arr. 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 Me hearty. Arr. No, don't. <laughs> Rough crowd. Rough crowd. Look at you. Always critics. Oh, but I love that you're all talking to us. It means a lot. <laughs> S phase. S phase. S phase. Right. 
Chromosome replication and DNA replication are the same thing. Think of it that way, right? So when you're replicating DNA, you're replicating the chromosomes because chromosomes are made of DNA. Same thing. And Sarah Robinson, I would love to be Jack Sparrow. <laughs> My favorite what is What a great movie. movies. Those were so much fun. They were just completely My favorite was when he makes up air burning the rum and he goes, but what about the and rum? The eyeliner. <laughs> it must have been like painful to wear all that eyeliner all the time. Genetics, Maddie. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so what can you say about this one? Draw a red dot to the cell whose DNA is more tightly coiled. Ooh, think ah, about this. Think about this. Miss Murdoch just talked about this a second ago. <laughs> tightly coiled means it's more visible. Which one is more visible, guys? This one. So when it's become invisible, yeah. that means it's tightly coiled. Remember, when it's tightly coiled, that means it's getting ready to divide. It's packing up its suitcases, right? So that's going to be in the prophase cell. The interphase cell on the right is the DNA is actually much looser because you want those genes to be available. All right. Now, why do cells coil up their DNA during mitosis? Just talked about this. Why? about why why oh why why oh, why oh yeah. is that curse of black pearl the first one I like the first one I like the second one too I didn't like the one with dead man's chest or the third I don't know they, they start getting a little bit crazy after a while. Nine responses. Why do cells cur curl it up? To make sister. Okay. To become available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one. So the cotton can separate and get lost during mitosis. That's right. I like that. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're coiling up tight, right, so that – when you separate those chromosomes, they don't get they don't get pieces broken off and lost, right? It's easier to move chromosomes, to move DNA if it's tightly packed. Easier to separate the chromosomes without DNA getting lost if it's tightly packed. Mm -hmm. They don't separate and mess up the process. Good. Okay, guys. I like that we're thinking. I like we're thinking. All right. Let's okay, so that's it. Break. That's it.